Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Solar Sphere by Dronda Games. It plays two to four players, takes roughly an hour to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Solar Sphere, you are going to be having a crew of ships and additionally drones, and your attempt is to build the Solar Sphere. However, invaders are there to stop you, but you can basically gather specialists to help you proceed in your goal. You'll be landing on different locations around the Solar Sphere and placing drones on it to gain a foothold in the area that we are trying to control, and the game will play out over six rounds. After the sixth round is over, you're going to tally up all the points that based on what you've gotten from the board here, all of the different cards you've been picking up, and anything that you would be getting based on your morale tracker on the board here. Whoever has the most points has done the best job to basically infiltrate and create the solar sphere. Let's take a look at the game down below. I'll show you the setup for the game, then how to play, and of course my review. So here we have the game Solar Sphere all set up for two players, and let's get into how to do so. The first thing, you'll take the hex tiles, and you'll place them in this configuration. Then you're going to flip over a certain number based on the number of players. In a two-player game, it's two. They're randomly organized, and you'll be placing one of each of these little white spaces on any of the two different ones that you see here. Additionally, you're then going to go ahead and take locations, all eight of them, and place them around the sphere. I specifically like to place them in this order, where you have the ones that allow you to place on the sphere your drones, the way you get crew, uh, the way in which you can gather more drones and recycle drones, the three different resource locations, and the resistance location as well. Take each player's point value marker and place it on the zero here, along with these chips that you can use to gain additional points when you pass over once and even twice. The extra markers that can be set aside right here. Each player is also going to get a player board, a drones of their color, dice of their color, and then they're going to get their sphere marker and of course their morale marker, and you're going to place them on the very far left-hand spaces. Give each player six drones, place them in their storage, and then move two over to their recycle storage area. Each player will get three dice they'll be using throughout the game, and a bonus die that they can use whenever they complete a very specific objective, and only once afterwards on the turn after. Each player will get the same exact resources as indicated. Additionally, set up the crew decks. There is a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three deck. Deal out two of the cards on, in the columns presented here, and that will be your crew area where you can gather those crew members when you can purchase them. Additionally, you'll have morale markers that you can place on the crew location whenever people do not buy them at the end of a round. Final thing is going to be your initiative track and your resistance cards. The, the initiative track is basically the turn order of the game. You can go ahead and place them wherever you want to begin with, as well as the die that you'll use for the resistance fights. And then take two decks of resistance cards. You're going to be getting a total of, I believe, 14, 15 of them. Get rid of three of them, create two decks of six, shuffle them up, and then deal one card down below each of the decks. The game's going to function with six rounds, and after all of the resistance cards have been dealt out, if you were to draw another one, instead you don't and the game will end. Afterwards, you're ready to begin the game Solar Sphere. Now for gameplay. The entire board is set up and I'm ready to go with two players. And the first phase of the game is each player will take their three dice and then they're going to roll them. After they roll them, they're going to place them on the locations indicated on their player board. So for instance, I have a three here, I have a four here, and I have a one here. And of course, if you have doubles, you can go ahead and place them on top of each other. Then you're going to gain morale based on the dice that you roll. The higher the die roll, the better it will be for locations, but less morale you're going to get. So with a one here, I'll gain two morale, with a three I will gain nothing, and then with a four I will gain nothing as well. So I'll move my marker on my morale track up two. I can then go ahead and take these off off of the board if I want, um, but it's better to leave them on so that you know when you can utilize them. And the same is said for this player over here. I have two green, uh, two threes, which means I'll get two morale, one and two. And then afterwards, you're going to go ahead and check the cumulative total or, or total sum of the dice that you rolled. In this case here, he's got a total of 11, which is more than a total of eight. Thus, the black will go first in the turn order. If you're playing with more players, you'll sit, situate them based on the order in which they've gathered the dice and they've had the sum, so it would be like 10, 7, 6, and 4, okay? Then you're going to begin taking the phases of play, which is deploying your ships. You have three ships to start with, and you can choose 
any of the three. And then you'll be able to place them down on any of the locations on the board here. There are eight different cho cho chosen locations. One is going to allow you to basically allow you to place drones from your supply onto this board provided you rolled a high enough number or equal. And of course, you can place it alongside an adjacent square or an opponent's square. This will give you morale based on the adjacent um, markers that you have or your opponents will get morale based on that. And you'll have to pay the resources required on the top and then gain the benefits down below. Generally benefits are going to be either morale, moving your sun marker, or you're going to be gaining resources that you can use to buy crew. If you do not want to do this one here, you can move on to the next one. This one will allow you to buy cards. To buy a card, you place a die on here. It has to be an odd. The ones that say O are odd, and the ones that kind of look like an E uh, are basically even dice. Uh, if they have like this, this weird little symbol right here, that means it can be any die at all. And you can go ahead and buy a card. You pay the resources required at the top left, then you gain the benefit at the bottom. It's an ability that you can use once per round. And additionally, there's going to be some icons in the top right that when you get sets of them, will give you five points at the end of the game. And then there's also bonus victory points on the bottom left-hand side that you'll score instantaneously when buying them. And the next one here is you can recycle based on your die roll. This one over here will give you two drones. This one over here will give you green resources and or yellow and or you have the gray ones. And then finally over here is the resistance. When you place a die here, it has to be an even die. And then you have to spend a green crystal and you can take any number of your drones and place them on the resistance ships here. At the end of every round, these ships are going to roll this die. And if you have an equal number or greater than number of uh, your drones on those fleets, you will gain control of this card and receive any victory points. As long as you have a drone on there and it is completed, you'll score either the first, second, or third place in bonus victory points. But at the end of every round, these are guys are going to move down, and if they're on the second track and they get pushed down again, they're gonna be removed from the game along with all of your drones. So be aware of that, just in case you might not have enough drones to do so. And those are all the different locations. Another thing to note with locations is when you place a die on one of these locations by visiting it, you can choose to not use the ability. And instead you can take one of your drones and you can place it on that specific location. So that the next time that you go there, you'll get the basic location and the additional bonus location for the rest of the game, which is highly useful. After you've placed one of your die on one of these locations, whether it be on, for instance, here to give yourself one of the drones for a bonus, look, a bonus action next round, the next player will get a chance to go placing their die down, gaining any resources that they might need to acquire and placing them in their resource pool over here. And it'll go back and forth until all of the different uh, dice have been placed down. When that happens, you're gonna go into resistance combat. Resistance combat is fairly simple. You will take a look at the bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right cards, and you'll roll for each of them. If the number exceeds the number of drones on there, the ship is not going to be defeated. If the ship moves down into the third position, it is gone forever. If, however, you have enough drones in total, uh, based on you and anybody else, that ship will be defeated. The player who has the most drones there will get the card for set bonus purposes. And then based on the player's amount of ships on there, they were going to get these scoring the first, second, or third place victory point prizes. Then after each of the ships have done combat, you're going to move on to the cleanup phase. The cleanup phase will move ships down and replace them with new resistance fighter ships. If any ships have not been defeated from the top row and they move down to the bottom, you're going to take one of these white cubes and place them on there. So basically constituting, constituting of like an extra drone to make it a little easier before they go away. Any of these guys that were not bought are going to get a morale marker so that the next time someone purchases one of them, they're going to gain that card and additional morale for doing so. So it's kind of an incentive before they leave. Finally, they'll flip over to two if no one buys them. And if it's after two, the cards will just disappear. So it might be worth it to pick it up for two. Otherwise, you might not ever get the card again. Another thing to note too that's interesting in this game is that when you hit these morale markers that have the little spanners, you can choose to move down from one spanner to the next on your turn, and you're going to get a spanner bonus. Whether it's going to give you a resource of your choosing, it will let you recycle two drones, meaning push them from the red area to the uh, blue area or your supply area. And finally, it will let you get a drone from your outside supply and place it into your inner supply, which will allow you to utilize them for placing them down onto fighting other vehicles, or whether it be to place them down over here, 
controlling different areas on the solar sphere. This can be very useful. And if you have um, your resources or your, I should say, your, your little morale tracker and it moves down to the spanner where your little solar sphere marker is, not only will you get one spanner, but you will get an additional one whenever they collide. So that can be very beneficial. However, at the end of the game, wherever these two markers are at will score you victory points based on their location. So it's very good to try and push these guys all the way to the top because they will net you 10 points each if you can do so at the end of the game. After six rounds of play, and the way they're tracked is by these little resistance fighters, basically when you draw the last set of them, and you were to go ahead and draw again on the next round, instead you don't, and you're going to trigger the end game. None left, go to draw some more, can't draw some more, the game ends. In which case you will score victory points based on the amount of drones you have on the solar sphere, based on the cards that you have and their point values, whether um, it be already assigned here or via the sets that you get, because for each of the three different sets, you'll score five points. I believe they're red. Uh, what else? They are blue and they are green. And of course, there's a white circle, which is a while. So you can score a ton of different set bonuses. And then you'll also score points for having your um, morale and solo markers on this track here. It could be all the way, up, all the way down from negative six, all the way up to uh, positive 10 points. Whoever has the most points in the game, Solar Sphere is the winner. That's, that's it, that's how you play it. Just before we get into my review, there's one other little thing I wanted to talk about, and that utilizes the player boards here. This board here, you're going to be basically placing your dice here, which will track your morale every turn. This is how many resources you can have with no more than a total of six. This is your spanners that you're going to be utilizing, your spanner actions. And then you have your sun tracker and your morale tracker, which can not only give you points at the end of the game, but you can also push them back in order to gain bonuses. And the final thing here is the bottom left-hand side. This is going to net you bonuses when you recycle your drones. Generally speaking, when you choose a recycle action, you'll move drones from the red area back to the blue area. And the other way you get drones from your outside of the game is by utilizing the location that puts two or even three onto your blue area. When you recycle from here though, you have another option. You can take those drones and remove them from the game forever, placing them in this area here. You can only place one in each column each time you do it though. And uh, when you fill up a column, you're going to get to use a bonus die for your next turn. And you can only do it three times in the game, provided you're able to fill up all three columns. This bonus die can be useful because you'll get four locations instead of three on that turn. Additionally, every time you fill up one of these spaces, you'll get either a morale, a victory point, or a resource, or a higher number or value every time you move from column to column, or a better resource. So they start lower and they go higher, and of course when you fill up those columns, they're going to give you that bonus die. Otherwise, you pretty much know how to play the entire game, utilizing your die to either place drones on here for a benefit next time you go on there, utilizing them to either place on the solar sphere, or go out and gather some crew members, fight against the resistance fleets, or of course gain re needed resources to, to buy or, or, or place on certain action spaces. There's a bunch of different tactics in this game. Do you want to try and build your forces on the solar sphere, creating as many locations as you can, gathering morale that you can use for your spanner ability when you place adjacent to your own spaces, but avoiding players who are also on the board because they will get bonus morale when you place next to theirs? Do you want to gather crew members? Gathering crew members will give you points instantly, It'll also give you uh, different bonuses every round to utilize. Now, of course, you can only have three crew members at any point in time. And if you choose to gather more crew members, you can choose to recycle them and they'll give you a bonus recycle ability on the far left hand or right hand side of the card here. And you'll get to keep it for the end of the game scoring when it comes to netting for your set bonuses. So the value of those guys can improve along the way and you can kind of keep at least the bonuses that you need or what's most important because you purchase them for the end of the game. Now, of course, there are better crew members. There are worse crew members. Some of them will m reduce or mitigate the cost costs of certain locations, and all of them provide different benefits. Uh, the artwork for this game is amazing. It has a ton of beautiful stylized artwork where I feel like I'm in a solar universe. I feel like I am moving around trying to place drones down on my suns. I'm working to uh, basically create these different locations like additional abilities that will push me further along in gameplay. Dealing with the resistance fleet is probably my least favorite thing to do because I'm too scared that when I roll the die it might not solidify a bonus for me because if it's 
it basically gets too high, the power might n not give me what I want, and thusly I've wasted my time. But for those of you who like a little bit of risk taking, this is that portion of the game for you, because when you place them down there, maybe you place only a couple, it can net you a ton of points, up to even five points, uh, and additionally, it can net you a bonus, uh, a bonus little symbols that you can score at the end of the game, which also work in tandem with these guys here, and these guys as well. So it's got a little bit of that luck-based aspect other than just rolling the dice. I don't mind the die rolling so much, but this scares me, so I tend to stay away from things like this in a game. But for Callie, she loves that aspect, and throwing them down and kind of netting bonus victory points when the dies roll uh, can, can greatly influence your ability to win the game. Everything here looks very complex and complicated. The rulebook looks pretty long and intense because there's a whole lot going on in the game. And it's gonna probably be condensed later on. Uh, but really, once you understand each of the locations, everything else comes together. Each of these cards represents either a location that you can go ahead and venture to, or resources that you can gain, or in some way you'll be able to utilize your drones. And once you get the basic locations down, everything else just kind of melds into place. I think Johnny Pack developed this game, and did some stuff like that, and you can definitely see his work uh, presented in here, along with uh, Simon uh, Milburn and Aiden Lothar. I don't want to say his name. Hopefully, I didn't say your name wrong. Uh, but I like the idea of like mini games kind of coming together and working together in certain ways. And this kind of has that feel to it, where you can choose to resource gather for a location for for characters here that you can get set bonuses from. You can jump over to this location and worry about area control, where you can still gain set bonuses as well as additional like solar points that you can move up. Over here, you can do a little bit more of a luck-based game, where you can choose how much you want to risk or guarantee it, because obviously this die only goes to two, and if you have a two there. Well, then, if, as long as you have four or more drones there, it's not really an issue, right? And it indulges you in all those different ways. You can kind of choose, pick and choose what you want to do, or do a little bit of everything as well. And then on your player board, the idea of using spanners and kind of moving things around to kind of net you bonuses, and the more... more uh, the more you think about your turn, the better value you're going to get out of it. Where you choose to place, when you choose to place, when you choose to move down the spanner and gain those resources and bonuses. Uh, planning out your turn is probably the most fun in this game that I've had in a long time because there's so many different little aspects to it that can make a difference. And if you plan on a turn very, very well, you can kind of make a plan unfold exactly as you'd like it to, which is nice. Most of the time, uh, plans coming together in board games never actually happen, and this game is kind of an exception to that rule. I mean, yes, yeah, some places, can, some people can take specific locations on your board or take specific characters you want, but there's so much uh, choice in this game and value you can get out of your turn, and there's always some way that you can kind of come out on top for at least what you want to do that, that feels good when you play your turn, especially after the beginning points of the game. About midway through and on, you're really wanting to crack down and really to visualize what your turn needs to be in order to succeed. All the components and quality are top notch. This is obviously a prototype, so it's going to be even better. This board didn't fit around this thing perfectly. I'm not worried about it because I know the type of games that these guys make and it's going to fit in just well. So I wouldn't worry about any of that. The cards, the artwork, everything looks really, really great. I'm excited for this game. I'd really like to see what it looks like at the end at the end result. And I want to know if there's additional expansions. Like that. I know the Kickstarter is already out and I wanted to kind of stay away from looking at all the other reviews and all that kind of stuff and just kind of give you like, give you like my thoughts and my general rambling before I take a look at what everybody else thought. But for me, this is an excellent game. This is a lot of fun. This is a lot of intrigue, a lot of choice, and of course, a little bit of competition, but nobody's foil foiling you in ways that are like, take that. It's always very thought provoking and thought, um, it's always very meticulous as to what you want to do with this game. Solar Sphere gets my seal of approval. I barely hand these out, but this one definitely deserves it. This is a ton of fun and a beautiful board presence as well. Pick up this game on Kickstarter. You, you won't regret it if you like what you see here. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Solar Sphere. If you like this game, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. We do more reviews, more content related to this, as well as on our website, as well with separate reviews. Brian does a lot of stuff as well for us. We have a Facebook group. We have a Discord that you can check out what we do and our games that we create. And of course, you can also check out our live stream every Sunday. 6.30 p.m. PST. We usually did Wednesdays, now it's Sunday, but today we're doing a stream at 6.30 roughly for a bonus stream, so 
we do a lot of stuff here and we appreciate it and it helps us with Patreon when people donate to them. Speaking of Patreon, thank you Patreon members so much for a dollar a month. It helps us go a long way in creating more content for you guys, showing you more stuff that comes out and of course playing more games with you on our streams. Uh, there's so much more to talk about with this game too. Uh, I didn't want to get into it because there's, there's there's a ton of different choice, even how your how you utilize your dice, how how your turn strategy works, uh, your morale and how morale kind of fits in. Uh, but but I kind of want you guys to experience some of the uniqueness to the game and the different strategies that I kind of pushed away from that just to just to give you a basic idea of all the different things you can do and how they kind of work together in tandem. Regardless though, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to building the solar sphere with you next time.